And in EOS Energy, we're looking to provide tools for people to be able to decarbonise their energy consumption. If you're in energy, you know that the business is transitioning. I think though it's very easy to skip forward to 2050 and say, let's do things differently. Very important thing we have to do is supply our customers now with the energy that they need. If you don't have energy, you, you, it's hard to have industry and it's hard to move around, it's hard to heat your home and, and hospitals. So to have that energy at the same time as being able to make a commitment to be net zero by 2050 is very important. It's existential in many ways for the way in which people live today is, is how do you continue to use energy but at the same time decarbonise. The carbon capture and storage is an important part of the mix of uh, decarbonising the world's energy. There was a project we've got going in Denmark, Project Green Sand. Project Green Sand is special because it's world leading. We have two phases of green sand. We have the pilot project and we have a commercial phase. So the pilot project will take the CO2 from Antwerp oxide plant, where they're already capturing the CO2. And what we will do is we'll put it into ISO containers in a liquid state and we'll take it out via a production support vessel, which will sail out around 500 kilometers to platform where we will install a pump and inject it via rig into the reservoir. And it's very important to do the monitoring as part of that and see how that will work essentially and maintain the CO2 down there. We're also going to monitor it via the pressure and the temperature to make sure it's well condensed down there and it behaves as we want it to. So that's the pilot phase to test the injectivity. In the full phase of the commercialization of the project, our intention is to build a network of ships and storage of CO2 on land around anywhere that's accessible to here as a ship-based solution. We'll have a permanent connection where the ship can sail up, it connects to that and then pump the uh, CO2 into the reservoir at a rate of four to eight million tonnes per annum. It's essential for the people that we can maintain this industry. It means that we can again repurpose the infrastructure, but what it also means is that a lot of the employees we have out here will have a secure job for many years to come. Looking into the future of, uh, for myself and for my uh, colleagues, we have the skills already to operate and operate safely offshore. So looking at my own part, it's going to be many more years in an asset like this that perhaps had like five years left. Now it's, we're talking decades. It's very exciting because the symmetry between us having extracted the hydrocarbons then using the same skills and techniques to put the CO2 back in again really fits well with what we're trying to do here. Denmark has one of the most ambitious climate targets. It's around 70% reduction. And inside that agreement, Denmark has a target to reduce up to 20 million tons. 8 million tons of that is earmarked for CCS in Denmark. And Project Green Sand has the potential to actually fulfill that fully over time. So it has actually a very huge potential we have in just one project here. Well, for, De for Denmark it's important and so important that the government has been very involved in helping us do this. I mean we can't do this kind of thing on our own. We need to have the right laws in place, the right regulatory support and, and the right partners. So we have a, a consortium of a number of partners uh, that have come together to, to work really closely on uh, making sure this is a success. INEOS is a very important partner for Denmark in reaching its uh, climate goal of 70% uh, reduction in 2030. There's no doubt that there is a huge complexity to start a carbon capture transport storage adventure that we are uh, engaging in now. And that's why government support is so uh, vital. Uh, and we have the government support in the sense that the government has decided that they have a vision of becoming a European hub for carbon capture uh, storage in Denmark. And for that, we need strong partners like INEOS, and we need also strong shipping companies who can build the ships that can transport the carbon from Denmark, but also from other places where you capture carbon into the North Sea for storage. Well, as port of Antwerp, uh, we host uh, the biggest uh, petrochemical cluster of uh, Europe, the second largest of the world. The challenge in the energy transition is to change not only the production of uh, energy, for instance, but to rethink the whole energy system and bring the right people on the right table in the right moment and looking and put their noses in the same direction. 
And so having Green Sand and Ineos leading the way and becoming the first mover and bring that liquefied uh, CO2 by ship and go to Denmark is a, a nice thing to have because seeing is believing and for everyone it will be clear that this technology is not a dream but it is reality right now. Here in Antwerp we uh, produce ethylene oxide and now in the process of producing ethylene oxide CO2 is produced. We try to keep that as low as possible of course uh, but it is a byproduct that we cannot avoid. So we will supply the CO2 for the project. We have been capturing the CO2 on this site for decades. So a proven technology, we know it works. And that's the same in the whole of this project. We are now just connecting the dots. If Green Sand proves to be successful and we are convinced it will, then it can effectively contribute to roadmaps all over the world. 2050 is net zero. Actually for the world to meet the commitments to make sure it doesn't heat up, you need to get to net negative beyond 2050. And that's why the IEA scenarios that look at carbon capture actually pinpoint them as, a, as an important enabler of that second part of the phase. If you wait until you get to 2050 to start storing CO2, you're not going to get to that net negative um, balance. The great thing about INEOS is the people that work here aren't afraid of a blank sheet of paper and saying, here's a big problem, let's actually set about trying to do something different. Carbon capture storage is one of the things towards carbon neutrality that we have to get right. There is no way we can fail on this. We need to get the right things in place in order for us to also have carbon capture storage in place no later than 2025.